One of the most frequently asked questions that I get is how to start a YouTube channel, any tips and tricks for growing a YouTube channel, or maybe like you've posted a few videos and you just want to like, you know, figure out how to get the ball rolling, how to do YouTube in general, you've come to the right place. If you are new to my channel, my name is Brooke. I'm 26 years old, I live in New York City. I have actually been posting YouTube videos for over 12 years. Quite a history with this platform, but besides that, I was actually able to make YouTube and like social media into my full-time job about four years ago. So I'd like to think that I kinda know what I'm doing over here and I've definitely picked up some tips and tricks over the years. So let's just hop right in. Now first up, whether you've posted a few videos before or you're completely new to the platform, I think it's really important to think about your why. Why do you want to host videos? Do you want to share your life? Do you have a specific passion or interest or hobby? Do you like video editing? Whatever it is, I feel like you want to kind of enter with a purpose. I feel like in this day and age, we see a lot of success on social media and you see money and fame and kind of like the glamorous parts of it all. I like to say that like success on YouTube or social media in general is like an iceberg. And we only see that top of the iceberg that's floating sort of over the ice. You don't see the 98% of people that are sort of like below the ice, putting in the work every single week, uploading consistently, been doing it for years, that kind of like are just in it. But we see those people that, you know, maybe they posted a few videos and they went viral and kind of like shot up to success overnight. I was able to make this into my full-time job after many, many years of doing it. It is completely possible. And in most cases on a shorter time frame than me. However, I feel feel that if making money is your immediate goal and you don't have any other reason for doing it, you will burn out pretty quickly. Honestly, for me, I love to talk. Ever since I was younger and I started making videos, I just would hit record and just friggin' yap away. I am pretty outgoing. I just always felt like I had something to say and to share. I love sharing my life. Now, the fact that I get to essentially get paid to do it is amazing. You know, maybe you've been watching YouTube for many years and you're like, oh, this is so fun. It's so like, you know, it's a safe space for me. I want to contribute to this pocket of the platform. The reason could be whatever the heck you want it to be. I just feel like you can't go into it immediately like, okay, I'm starting YouTube. I want to make money. It takes a minute. So we have to have some patience here. And I'm the least patient person ever. So keep that in mind. <laughs> so once you kind of have your your why, your, your reason behind this all, we can go on into the equipment of it all. Another frequently asked question that I always get is, what do I film with? What do I edit with? How do I make my thumbnails? So I'm going to break it all down for you now. No gatekeeping. For general just advice here, I think you should start with whatever you have. If you're like, I want to start a YouTube channel, I would not go out and like buy a bunch of equipment and like do this all. I know for me with hobbies, I've done this before. I've like purchased all the things and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, I don't like this thing. So why not start with what you have? I oftentimes, like when I'm out and about, film with my iPhone camera, especially the newer ones. I have the 15 quality insane. The audio could be a little bit better, but you could easily get like a little external mic or something from Amazon. The tip that I would have for filming with the back camera on the iPhone is just to make sure that you're filming in 4K, 60 frames per second. I would say that that's like the highest quality that I've seen. I love filming on wide mode. Since I do primarily vlogs, I think it is a lot of like background and setting. So I love filming with the like 0.5 lens on the iPhone. If you have, um, you know, some sort of digital camera, you can use that. I think equipment and editing software and just things that, like that could like run you up. That, that could be one of the most expensive, like limiting parts I feel like of this job. So why not start with like just the entry level, like what you have access to. And if you like it or if you see success, you know, then you can like kind of invest from there. Let's start low cost. That's just my advice. Now in terms of like equipment, what I use, I can link my entire setup below. It is nothing crazy or complicated, but it's what works for me. I primarily do vlogs, so I like to have a camera that has sort of every function in one. Since I'm like filming my face, but I'm also filming like, you know, images of like what I'm doing, if I'm out and about in like a city or traveling, I don't need too crazy of like a background blur or anything. I have the Canon M6 Mark II. That's what I'm filming with right now. And I'm filming with like a wide lens. This is an 11 to 22 mm lens. So we get a little bit of like a wider shot. Like you can see, you know, my whole room pretty much. From here even though i'm like pretty close to the camera right now i like this for vlogging because if i'm like reaching my arm out you know vlogging like this you can see a good amount of the background i think the quality 
is pretty good. The camera itself is super easy to work with. I also have an external mic on my camera. I find that the built-in audio with this camera is also not the best. So I have this little like plug-in mic that's like 20 bucks. I will also link that down below with my setup so I can give you like the full setup. It's just the camera, the wide lens, and then the little mic thingy. If you're a vlogger, I think this is an excellent setup. But at the same time, I think that there are other vlog cameras that maybe have kind of like an all-in-one build-in. So you don't need to get all these extra parts. Rarely, I will use my Canon G7X. This, <laughs> this one has been, been through it, okay? Like the lens cover doesn't really work anymore. This is what I used to use for all of my videos though, up until like maybe three years ago. A lot of people have been taking photos with this these days. It does take fantastic photos. You can go on my Instagram to see some of those. This is a really good, just kind of like all in one video camera. I didn't use a mic with this. I would just like literally set it up. It has like a flip up little screen and you can kind of prop it up. This one makes you look pretty good. It is small and compact enough that you can kind of like put it in your purse or whatever. My current setup is a little bit bigger, so I usually need to bring like a bigger purse or like a tote bag. So something to keep in mind, finding the perfect vlog camera setup is a little bit tricky if you are a vlogger. If you're filming like more high production videos or things that are a little bit more involved, you don't necessarily have to worry about this, so. For editing software, transparently, um, I do use an amazing video editor, Jana. Hey, Jana. After doing YouTube for many, many years and like editing on my own, I decided that that would be a really good investment for me to make in order to get out more content, to consistently post two videos a week. This is something that for me has proven to be like a worthy investment in my business. For the many, many years of editing that I did do, I started out using iMovie. This is a build-in like program on the Mac. It usually comes like standard with it. I know that it's free. Then eventually I upgraded to Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is what I still use to edit some reels and TikToks whenever I like edit on the computer. This is what I use just because I'm familiar with it, but I think it is all about like really learning all of the features of whatever editing software you choose to use. I know Final Cut Pro is a very popular one for YouTubers. If I ever think of like a creative transition or effect or something, I just type into YouTube like how to do blank 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 on Final Cut Pro. But once again, I would say start with what you have. I wouldn't go crazy and like invest in like a super expensive editing software if you don't even know that you're like gonna want to stick around with YouTube. Now for the type of content that you're gonna put out there. So you've already, you know, you're like, I'm in, I'm passionate, I've got my equipment, I'm ready to start. What type of content are you gonna make? The common advice that I hear is to niche down, to find your niche, find whatever it is that, you know, you're specifically interested in and do that. If it's makeup, do makeup. If it's, you know, fast food reviews, do fast food reviews. You know, a home decor, do home decor. I'm gonna tell you to do the opposite. <laughs> I think you need to try a bunch of different stuff and see what works. Now you might be like really passionate about one thing and you might be like, okay, you know, I wanna just make videos about art. I would still say to try different types of videos within that niche, see kind of what hits and what doesn't, or even like what resonates with you, like what videos you preferred making. YouTube is just very saturated in the way that a lot of videos these days are the same, at least for me and like the lifestyle vlogger community, I feel like it's very redundant. People are very similar. So as a viewer, I love finding channels that are a little bit different, whether that be their editing style or their personality. It could be like small stylistic things like in the post-production you're doing like cool transitions and b-roll and voiceovers or some people are just very raw like they just put the footage in very less produced lesser produced i guess i feel like you need to find the intersection of what you enjoy making and then like what you see a positive response from or what you're seeing engagement from i would encourage trying lots of different things at least for me i know how my vlogs are going to perform typically I know what types of videos my audience likes, so it's hard for me to like veer off of that because I know what works. In the beginning, try a bunch of, like it's like throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks. For the posting cadence or posting amount, this is something that's like underratedly very important. I think if you start a YouTube channel, you kind of have to go into it with like somewhat of a plan. Maybe you're not just completely ready to start like posting videos right away. Maybe you're working on a bunch, kind of having them backlogged and then you're going to slowly roll them out over time. The worst thing for me is when I find a YouTube channel that I really, really like. I subscribe, I'm like, can't wait for a new video and they don't post a new video for like three weeks. And I'm just like, 
I need more content. I feel like you need to pick something that's consistent, but also manageable, realistic for yourself. You want to give your audience something to look forward to. And I feel like that's a great way to grow is kind of to be like, hey, look out for my next video. I like doing upload days on my channel. So my audience knows generally when to expect new videos. So I do like Tuesday and Saturday. So my audience knows to check my channel on those days or, you know, if they log into YouTube on a Sunday, they know like, oh, Brooke posted a new video yesterday. I think it kind of like trains them to expect that. And I've had those same days for like many, many years now. And I feel like it's helped a lot. I think if you could do once a week, that's great. If you want to do every other week, that's great. Just pick something that's realistic for you. And obviously it depends how involved the video is. Like I said, for me now I have some help. I have a video editor. Twice a week is very reasonable for me. There tends to be a lot of perfectionism with people coming into YouTube. They'll say like, oh, I can't post this video yet. It's not perfect. I'm still working on it. I think you kind of need to drop the expectations a little bit and be a little less self-critical because I think it's more important to get out content than to sit and stir and be so involved with like every little detail. You gotta let go sometimes. Next, we're gonna talk about the packaging of your video. Yeah, so like the gift wrap. But when you open a gift, it just is gorgeous. The wrapping paper is like embossed. It has like a beautiful bow. You're excited to open up that package. Same analogy here with YouTube videos. Your video could be amazing, but if the thumbnail title isn't telling that story, it's not gonna hit. I feel like this especially matters in the beginning when you're trying to grow your channel, especially starting from zero. Someone once told me that your video thumbnail is like a book cover or a magazine cover. Do you wanna pick it up and read it? You have to find your style with your titling and your thumbnails and stuff like that. For me, I love using photos that kind of were taken throughout the days that I was vlogging because like I said, I do vlogs. I use either PicMonkey or Adobe Express to make my thumbnails. I know there's free versions of both of them. I don't have anything too complicated. I just think overall consistent branding is really important with this having a sort of style that you stick to. You want it to be that they could recognize that it's a video from you, even just seeing that picture, that little tiny picture. The YouTube search engine optimization, SEO. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. You do have to give it some stuff to work with. If you just post a vlog and you're like, vlog, exclamation point, who, what's going on in that? Tell me more. I love like when it's broken down, do a little bit of clickbait, you know? Do something that people, are, it's enticing, people want to click on. You're essentially selling them on your channel. You know, you're being like, hey, come watch this video. This is what I'm offering, free content. Especially in the beginning, I would say fill in your description and your tags, give YouTube things to work with because it's trying to pull as much data as it possibly can to like feed back into the algorithm. But you do have to give it something to work with. If you just say vlog, that's like the most general term. We also have to talk about cross promotion. If you already have an audience somewhere else, like let's just say you want to start YouTube, but like you already have a following on TikTok or Instagram, capitalize on that audience that you already have because growing an audience on any platform is a challenge. A tactic that I like is maybe posting half of the video somewhere else. So post half of the video on your TikTok and then say, go to YouTube to watch the other half. It's actually harder than it sounds. I feel like I know a lot of people who have a huge following on TikTok and really struggle getting those people to convert to YouTube, but do the best with what you can in terms of like trying to be like, hey, come with me. And also the opposite, while I love YouTube so, so much and it always has a special place in my heart, I think it's important to have followers um, on the other platforms as well. So I would always try to encourage your followers watching your videos to, you know, join along with you on other platforms too. I always try to say that. I'm like, I always post Instagram stories. You guys can go check them out on there. Or like, oh, and I, I posted a TikTok about that. You can go see that on TikTok. But I try not to post the exact same piece of content everywhere because I feel like that's not necessarily incentivizing to the audience to go like follow you somewhere else. Now, sometimes I do that because if I'm going to edit a piece of like short form content that's kind of like non-branded and like just, you know, something that I did, I wanna post it maybe everywhere. So I will do that, but it's okay to repost the content on all of the platforms, but at the same time have some original content that lives on each, mic drop. Length of video, this is going to depend on your channel. I think YouTube is a long form content platform. So if you can make a video that's 10 plus minutes, why not do it? You know, people wanna see the short form stuff on other platforms or on YouTube Shorts. So I think for your regular videos, longer better. YouTube does have a lot going on and I feel like they're always launching like new sort of ventures. I like to stay on top of those because I feel like being an early adopter to any sort of new feature is always going to be an advantage. But two things that I do on YouTube, number one is community board posting. The community board is a really 
cool place actually. It's more of like a Twitter almost. You can do like text blurbs. You could share like photos and I guess you could share videos there too. You can create polls. So it's a really great way to survey your audience and just a really great way to directly engage with them and kind of get feedback. I've posted here like kind of thinking about new content or asking what type of content people prefer or kind of getting out a message. And another feature that I think is great here on YouTube is shorts. At first I was like, oh, not another, not another TikTok or reels, but honestly, it's here so we might as well be using it. Now this is where I will repost. I will repost things that I do on TikTok or Reels because I do think that Shorts is helping a lot of creators grow their channel right now because when someone is watching a YouTube short and they click follow, that follow is a subscribe. If you already have great short form content, I think just post it on your page, you know, just kind of ads. I find that these gain views over time. So while I might post a short and it will like quote flop in the short term, I'll look back on it a few months later and I'm like, wait, this actually like did pretty well after all. And something that I've found impactful as a creator is having a audience that is generally very engaged with me. So I like to encourage commenting. You should comment on this video. I'll try to reply to you guys too if you have any questions or anything. Obviously like, you can like this video too. That helps a lot too. You might be looking at my channel and be like, why would I trust this girl? Like she doesn't have a million followers, you know? I have been able to make everything I do a business because I have really like high engagement for the following that I have. My followers, like they really know me and they know my life and they come out to my podcast live shows and they, you know, know my family, you know, shop my product recommendations and stuff. I feel really connected to my audience. And I think that is a really underrated and important thing to have when creating a YouTube channel. I think YouTube is one of the places that can foster community truly in one of the best ways. I love seeing like people commenting back and forth on my videos and like really having a full conversation. I'm like, wow, this is so freaking cool that I was able to like create this space where we can all come together and be here. We're just here. We're just all here watching this video right now. Like, hi. Having engagement is definitely really, really important. And I think that that is all that I have in terms of the tips and tricks for starting a YouTube channel in 2024. I wanted to get this video up right before the new year because I feel like this is a lot of people's like resolution. They're like, oh, okay, start of the year. I'm finally starting my YouTube channel. Do it. That's all that I have to say. I mean, YouTube changed my life in literally every single way imaginable. You have to be patient. You can't just post a few videos and be like, oh, I didn't see success. I'm out. Years and years and years of doing this. Like, really. Be patient. Be committed. I want to say good luck to all of you guys on your YouTube journeys. Definitely my favorite platform. So if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Like I said, I post lifestyle vlogs. Hoping to do more videos like this in the new year. Happy new year. Bye, guys.